for every at each level of the game, whether it's property manager, the first thing they want is they want units to be able to turn back on time, on budget. They can get someone in those units faster, right? Um, you know, th- that's that's their objective because they've got they get their bonuses, their structure based on how quickly they can get units turned and off of occup- uh, vacant rate. We want to make sure that we're delivering a great product faster than anybody else at a better price point that we can get them with everything they want while reducing the amount of time that that unit's down to increase overall asset value. Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Right For Me, where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Hey, everybody, this is Max Piven from Right For Me, and you're listening to another episode of the Business Ninjas podcast, where we meet the experts who are making things happen and scaling their businesses. And today we're talking about Mosley Multifamily with Todd Spitalny. He is the director of sales at Mosley Multifamily. Todd, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here today. Yeah, you bet. Um, So I've had the chance to get to know you a little bit, Todd. Um, Mosley is in the multifamily renovation space. Um, the company's been around since 2007, uh, and I'm definitely excited to jump into what's going on at, at Mosley. But before we get into the organization itself, um, you know, our community is built of entrepreneurs, executives, and also sales and marketing leaders like yourself. So as the director of sales at Mosley, you know, please tell the business ninjas community a little bit about yourself, um, your role, and maybe some of the things you're focused on. Yeah, you know, it, it's I've been in the industry since about 2003. I uh, kind of got into the industry a little bit, un, uh, I, I would say a little bit uh, without intention. Um, I was a guy that was just coaching soccer high school and just graduated college and wanted to be a college soccer coach all my life. Uh, a couple of buddies of mine were working at a company and doing kitchen and bath renovations. And they said, hey, come work for us. We need someone in the call center. Awesome. Great. Let's let's jump in. Uh, six months later, I'm in, I get promoted to, from – the dealer call center into the fabrication team, which is selling the, the laminates, the countertops, all those lovely things in the market. Um, and then I got promoted, you know, they gave me all the tough customers, all the ones that were dying customers, bad margins. And they said, fix them or get rid of them, one or the other. Well, I, I don't like putting anything. So next thing you know, we've improved all our margins back to where they were. Um, then they promote me to, to multifamily, new construction. So well, you're going you're gonna to start. So I, I kind of run the gamut of from the inside coordinator to everything about it. And then the next thing I know, I'm the first field manager in company history, running 4,000 units of renovation. Um, took projects that were running historically behind. Next thing you know, we're back up to, to on time and ahead. Um, and they said, well, great. Why don't we try you at sales? No, I don't want to do that. Not what I want to do. Next thing I know, I'm selling a new, com- new construction commercial. Right before the crash in, in 08, I had gone to my my executive said, hey, I think we're going to have a problem. I think we're going to start losing projects. Looks like we're going to have a crash. And I said, I want to go to the renovation side. And I took all the practices that we had done from renovation, from the new construction to renovations. Fast forward, got 17 years or 15, something like that. Um, I've now been doing multifamily for the last 15, 16 years only. I'm loving it. Um, it's great when I get to go and I, I look at how do I create a home for someone that wasn't there before? So that's how I got into it. That, that's why that's what excites me. Um, driving around Northern Virginia or DC or Maryland, and I get to look around and say, I built I, I designed that building. Um, something I get to show my kids. So it's kind of exciting for me. That's that's why I'm here. Very cool. Yeah, I'd love to hear kind of like how you know you transitioned from uh the sporting world. My I can relate to that. My my dad is a, a was a college basketball coach and uh, you know, it's, it's tough, it's tough job doing that, uh, on a, uh, you know, trying to live, have a family too, right. Uh, mm-hmm. and have a, have a life, right. You're dedicated to the school, to the job, to the success of the team. Uh, now it sounds like you're in, uh, you know, focused on the success of your company, right. Uh, as the of sales and, uh, and also helping people to be able to, to get roofs over their head and, uh, have the house of their dreams too. Right. So, um, so I, lo- I love hearing kind of the, the journey from where you are to, Coaching and, you know, coaching is a little bit of sales too. You got to do a lot of, of your own uh, recruitment too. So uh, it's probably a little bit in your, your background and blood, even before you even knew you were going to get into this role. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, I, I retired last year from coaching and, and uh, 
I don't regret it one bit. I miss my coaching. Let's let's be yeah. clear, but yeah. I, I I enjoy. I get to combine my two worlds now. Yeah. Um, developing young people to become to get where they want to go in the world, as well as designing the the other side of the world, which is what I love. So the two worlds finally got to combine. Um, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. Yeah. That's awesome. So, you know, you being the director of sales, um, you know, I'm sure you get put on the spot a lot. And so I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but, you know, to give our audience the opportunity to understand, okay, who, who is Mosley, right? They understand a little bit about you now, but, you know, I know I've Im- imagined pitching an idea on Shark Tank or being the shark myself. So I'd love it if you can give me Mosley's elevator pitch. Like what, what problem do you solve specifically? Well, and as you said, we, we focus on the problems that, that face our, our, our multifamily operators, right? The number one thing is for every, at each level of the game, whether it's property manager, the first thing they want is they want units to be able to turn back on time, on budget. They can get someone in those units faster, right? Um, you know, th- that's that's their objective because they've got, they get their bonuses, their structure based on how quickly they can get units turned and off the lock, uh, vacant rate. Um, we've got our, our regionals, our asset team that's concerned about maintain the value of the asset, uh, increasing the overall operating expenses. Then you have the owners whose number one priority is maintaining a great product, keeping occupancy rates high, increasing the the asset value as well as potentially uh, creating a higher NOI so they can sell the property or even refi off of it. Mm-hmm. So our job as Mosley Multifamily is very simple. We want to make sure that we're delivering a great product faster than anybody else at a better price point that we can get them with everything they want while reducing the amount of time that that unit's down to increase overall asset value. Okay. Um, so my my big thing is, is for my team when we're selling a project is how do we how do we hit your goals? Tell us your goals so we can design a project that meets all of those. Whether it's my project hasn't been maintained in, in, in 10 years, I got to upgrade it. Or is it I need to add um, amenities to create a, to compete with the new builds? All of those things. Um, so one of the very first questions we ask is, what is your goals? We're going to design a project. We're going to design a scope. We're going to design a finished schedule to meet exactly that goal and that pain point that you can't solve. Yeah. Um, all with all three of those major levels in mind to make sure we're achieving each one of their goals. Yeah. Those are the big things for us. So I, I heard a few things there, right? Like, um, but I'm still unsure, you know, is there a focus on like net new builds or is the focus on potentially like renovations of builds that need upgrades? All of it, all we do is renovations. We okay. we started off as a uh, new build general construct uh, contractor, as well as a renovation guys. Um, we believe in a theory called hedgehog. Stick with what you do well and do it and do it over again. Um, in 2020, beginning of it, we made the decision as a company that we were no longer going to do new builds. Everything was new, everything was renovations. So for us, especially with the amount of surplus going on in the market, these older properties in all of our markets, whether it's Indy or Pittsburgh or Virginia or Florida, they've got to keep up with all the new, the new surplus. That means they've got outdated finishes. You know, everyone wants the new, everyone wants the new shiny but they don't want to pay for it. So how do we do that? And it's a problem that faces our industry because once your property is 15 years old, it's time to renovate. It's time to upgrade because now I can't compete. So I'm competing at the same rental market. The only way I'm competing is I lower my rents. Well, that lowers your asset value. So in order to get a higher rent, you've got to put something into the property, whether it's going into an all new floors or kitchens or, or whatever it may be. I've got to compete. And that's where we come in and we help them do that. Mm -hmm. Whether it's with information on what their comps are doing in their area, whether it's what's coming down the road, keeping an eye on that data, that analysis of what's happening in their market helps them achieve it. Um, You know, that's got to be our priority. If they're not doing, you know, I was on a walk this morning and I'm looking and I'm listening to the contractor there. The guy knows his stuff. Guy knew his stuff but he lost track of the most important thing that was that owner needed is how do I get to the next level while being able to protect my investment? Mm -hmm. And he was so focused on on all these great things and adding all these wonderful things. But the problem is it was never going to create an ROI on the project. 
Gotcha. His ROI was going to be 12 years. What owner can do that? Yeah. Our objective is to get that ROI between five and seven years at a minimum or at a maximum of what they do. Okay. Let's talk about that. What's important to you? What's not important to you? Where can I value engineer the project, whether it's scope or finish or, or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing is, is how do I reduce that oc- the vacancy rate? If I do all these wonderful things, that's a 45 day return. I can't have it unit down for 45 days. I've got to be able to do it in eight to 14 or 21 days and get it back to you with everything you need. And that, and that's where it becomes tough. Gotcha. We talked there just a little bit about like you have a prospect potentially that sounds like it's a contractor. Is that your, you know, ideal customer? And are, are you focused in like specifically in, you know, geographic regions? Like where, who is that ICP and like, who are you, who, what are those, um, you know, where are they located? Who are those people? So like this morning, I was down in Richmond, Virginia. Our home base is Northern Virginia. Uh, our markets right now are Indianapolis, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Southern Maryland, D.C., Northern Virginia, Richmond, Virginia Beach. We were in Florida, um, but we pulled out because it was just too tough right now uh, to compete with the, you know, the challenges of getting materials down there. Unless you're direct importing right now, you're struggling down in, in Florida to really compete. Um, with, with getting resources. Um, so it's down there in Richmond. Our, our bread and butter is the owner, man, operator, someone that is that we can add value to. Okay. Um, we've got certain national operators that we've worked with in the past that we did a great job for, and they really care about us. But as a commodity to them, we were never a value add. We were just a number. Um, we can be successful doing that, but the truth is, is we look for those people that we can be values to value add to and help them grow their business. So we can also help grow our own business as well. So it sounds like that's a little bit of, of your secret sauce, I guess, but, but you tell me like, why do these, you know, customers, you know, choose you guys for these renovations over the competition? So, you know, it's about what we do up front. Um, our level of expertise up front in the process of developing their scopes making sure that when they're doing things, they're not wasting money. Um, a lot of our companies are great. That's, that's an extra dollar to us. Perfect. We'll do it. We'll do it. But that doesn't help them. You know, making sure that we're adding value, adding money to places that we can create value for the property that gets return on their investment, um, that adds value to a resident that improves their experience. Because our goal is to help them so that, that way that resident not only stays for one year, but two and three years. Sure. Um, the longer they stay, the more value gets added. Mm-hmm. So keep create a home that, that they want to be at. And then at the end of year three, we want them to move out so we can go back in there and do the work again. Uh, that, that, that's kind of how they look at it. Gotcha. Can you give me like, I guess, like an example then of a, of a customer that mm-hmm. you recently partnered up with that, yep. you know, hey, like they, you know, maybe wanted to change out like some of their appliances and, you know, mm-hmm. you, you heard that and maybe gave them a different path. Like, give me an example, I guess. So like right now I'm, I'm down in, in Richmond. We've got another project. It's a 1200 unit project. Uh, the property was built in the late sixties. Um, they were doing a basic renovation, all new cabinets, uh, flooring, you know, paint. Um, they wanted something different because the property didn't have washer dryers. Um, they also didn't have a law. La- they had one laundry center, which was, was, was right in the middle of the, the, this massive complex. Um, they have the ability to add washer dryers in the project. Next thing you know, we're talking about it. You know, we're doing this for you in another location. This would be, a, this is actually be a great resolution to the problem created for you. Sure enough, now we're doing uh, 1200 units of full renovations plus washer dryer ads. Um, they've been able to increase their rent by $400 a month just by adding that value and the increase. Um, they, that, that property, they bought it at a, at a great price but they've now increased their value by almost 35% of the property in a very short period of time by just doing, we've done, I think roughly 140 units already in the last six months. Um, We'll wind up doing a total of about 400 by the end of the year. Um, That added value allows them to compete um, and their customer satisfaction has dramatically increased Mm -hmm. since they bought the uh, project because now they've, the residents that are there are seeing that they care about them. They want more for them. 
those are things that we can really do. And then sure enough, we, we, we parlay that into a, for the same customer down in Virginia beach. Now we're doing the exact same project where literally we've ripped out walls, um, non-structural, we've rerouted the plumbing, created a much more open space, meaning the more open concept for them by simply just tweaking, pulling out a knee wall. So those are things that we, we've done um, in just a very short period of time. Very cool. So it sounds like there's a focus on, you know, scaling the amount of projects, um, mm -hmm. probably based on the amount of units. But what is, you know, the biggest challenge that, you know, is that's facing the business right now? Like not, not necessarily for your customers, but for you guys. Oh, 100 um, percent. You know, coming out of COVID, we, you know, as a company, we went roughly 14 months without any revenue during COVID. Um, I, my owner, you know, like I started April 1st, 2020. Great day to start, uh, April fool's day to me. Right. Um, you know, we thought COVID was going to be 30, 45 days. No one knew that it was going to be a two year event. You know, we went, you know, like I said, 14 months without revenue instead of, of laying people off or doing those things, we invested in all of our people. Um, our owner put in $2.4 million into new training habits for every one of our employees. We changed all of our systems. We changed all those things. Um, you know, and we come out of COVID and, and obviously we, we went gangbusters. Um, we, we, we opened up nine new markets with existing customers and we, we did great. Um, you know, we closed over $230 million in contracts in a period, in a period of, of nine months. Um, granted, this $230 million is that's spread out over five years mm -hmm. of, of actual contracts. Our biggest challenge, though, is, is obviously coming out of that, managing that challenge of growth, managing that cash flow of, of new markets, and then the banking challenges that are going on with banks are slow to pay. It's putting pressure on our vendors. It's putting pressure on our owners. It's putting pressure on us constantly. Um, because of the, of the way that it's costing us more to do the same things than it was just six months ago. Right. Um, you know, the market is trying to figure out what to do moving forward. We're going to see a very slow period of time for the next six months in renovations and multifamily as we try to determine where we're going to go. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the market's going to open up towards the back end of the year significantly, um, you know, because our customers, you got to remember also, well, many of them weren't collecting upwards of 30 to 40% of their rent for two years. Mm -hmm. Who's going to pay for that? Mm -hmm. It's got to come from somewhere. Well, you can't just keep renovating and keep renovating because you need that money to, to, to recoup the losses you had when people weren't paying rent for two years. Um, and that that's really been a challenge for our customers. And we've got to be supportive in that and we've got to figure out ways, but it's also challenging because we saw bills to pay. We, we, we can't keep extending terms, you know, because of that. And neither can our creditors, neither can our vendors. Um, and that, and that's not just a Mosley problem. That's an entire industry problem right now. So it sounds like you guys played definitely some offense, um, but also some defense during COVID. Mm -hmm. 100%. Um, even a little bit of that is probably going on today, right? So how are you guys thinking about like growing and, and scaling the business? Um, you know, we are, you know, it's like one of the things we do we, as, as a company, we, we've partnered with Cardone Ventures uh, to help us scale and develop over the time, making sure they're analyzing what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, and give an assistant in helping our, all of our people develop as well. You know, but one of the things that we are doing is we're analyzing a lot closer our expansion markets. Uh, you know, my expansion program has always been, I won't go to a new market unless an existing customer takes us there. And once we start generating positive revenue over a you know, period of time and the market's viable, we'll start adding those pieces, whether it's a sales team, whether it's a field management, um, you know, additional piece to the market, we will. Um, and that's what we've done. Um, you know, we looked at a couple markets and said, listen, this is just not the right time to be there. Um, you know, we were down in Austin, Texas for a very brief period on a couple of small projects. We made the decision during that period that we weren't going to build that market out. So we, we completed our projects there. We, we just did. Uh, down in Florida, we were down in Jacksonville, Tampa, Boca Raton, Fort Lauderdale, um, all those markets. Um, we, we finished up 17 projects over the span of 18 months there. Um, but right now, competing in that market just wasn't something. So we, we've gotten smarter. We've gotten 
a little bit more patient in how we're doing it. Yeah. Um, we have our strategic plan for where we're going next. Um, but we're, we're looking a little bit further out. We're trying to be a little bit more cognizant of timing um, as well as who we're going there with. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like today is you know, where you guys are is just trying to identify which markets you, know, you guys could potentially expand into. So what's something right. that, you know, let's say, hey, like the, you know, the year kind of goes on the way we expect it to. Like what's something that, you know, you guys want to be celebrating? Is it, hey, yeah, we're now we're in here. Now, you know, there's a focus that, you know, we have a project here and this is a new market we might be opening up to. Like what is what is that going to look like a year from now? So, you know, fast forward one year, I want to be in three new markets, three very, very smart markets that we're targeting. We've been analyzing for a while. Uh, you know, uh, we want to combine the Indianapolis and Cincinnati market together because th there's so many of the same people, you know, operating in Indianapolis that are Cincinnati and vice versa. It's a natural fit to us to make that jump. Our, our team that's in Indianapolis is able to manage both of them, and it's great. and They're doing a great job. So I want to be fully entrenched in Cincinnati by the end of this year. I want to be in Nashville by the end of, by by end of next this year as well. Um, Nashville's got a ton of exciting stuff going on. Um, all the new builds, all the renovations, all those exciting things. We want to be there. Um, and then I want to really, really hit Baltimore um, because that's a market that could be a lot of fun for a lot of people because the city is trying to reinvent itself. And it's it's such a beautiful town. We'd love to be there. Um, so that's, that's really kind of where we're going. Love it. Yeah. Nashville's, uh, consider home. Um, so, and every time I go back, it is filled with, uh, new plans, uh, for bigger growth in the city. Mm -hmm. You see new skyscrapers that weren't there a year ago. You see cranes everywhere, uh, new restaurants popping up. So, uh, I hear a hundred people move there every single day. So, uh, I could, I can totally agree about, about Nashville and, um, and it's cool to kind of hear like how you guys are thinking about the markets that, you know, even surrounding surrounding Nashville too. So just just to kind of reiterate what I'm hearing, it sounds like hey, like it's you know really focusing on specific markets where we already are and doubling down on those areas, and then seeing if there's opportunities in other areas as well. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's you know the market density is a huge thing that we have to make sure we're, we're cognizant of. You know, if there you know because you got to think about it, if it's 100,000 units in a market. Only 10 to 20 percent of that's going to renovate year over year. Mm -hmm. But if you think about that number, 10 percent of 100,000, that's 10,000 units at 15,000 average per, that's a pretty big market. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that's a pretty significant, you know, uh, moving the needle for us. So that's how we kind of look at it. So how do Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, no one owns more than 15 percent of any market. So mm -hmm. it, it's not hard to go in and in, in gain market share. Mm -hmm. So how would you go after Nashville? Like, is it establishing relationships? Um, well, we, we use what we call our national dream list. Um, our national dream list are the, are the top 50 multifamily operators in the country. And then inside of that, because we, we chase those guys, the, the, that's our, you know, we're not going to go to a market where there's not a Morgan properties or an equity or, or an Avalon Bay. One of those guys, a little monster guys. Um, you know, we do a lot of work with Morgan properties now who is one of the largest operators in the world. Um, for us, moving into Nashville with them would be our, our target um, or one of our, our existing other customers when they're buying properties there, traveling with them. Um, you know, th that's kind of how we, we want to jump to it. Like I said, we won't go to a market unless we've got existing business there or opportunity there. Um, you know, and then we look at the regional players. You know, in every market, there's 10 to 15 regional players that they can really add and move your needle as a company and really increase that dynamic for you. Once we're there with with a Morgan or one of those guys, now we want to start chasing those guys because yeah. then we can start creating opportunity. Gotcha. So uh, establishing partnerships and relationships um, and then seeing how those seeing how those uh, evolve over time and where they're going to be and uh, ensuring that you're part of those those plans. Right. Yes. Kind of Absolutely. Like, yeah. Do so, things the right way. It's not always about the single dollar. Let's go for let, let's let, let's build it. <laughs> exactly. So as we wrap things up here, Todd, um, is there anything else you'd like to share? Anything that you think you know, our listeners need to know about you or the company, you know, that we haven't covered just yet? Well, you know, I think one of the things about us and, and, and is 
we're always looking for ways to to add value. Um, whether it's jumping on a podcast like this just to add value, not necessarily to pitch who mostly is, but to talk about our company, talk about our industry. Um, those are things that we will always want to do. Um, sometimes your best sales pitch is just doing the right things and and helping others grow, which is what we're we're really focused on. Um, you know, as a company, we focus on our personal, professional, and financial goal setting with every one of our employees, but we're also doing that with a lot of our customers too. You know, um, when we're talking to you as a property manager, I'm asking you, what are your personal goals? What are your professional aspirations? What can I do as a partner to help you achieve that? Sure. Um, you know, whether it's it's making sure they're hitting their bonus structure or, hey, you know, whatever it may be, we're, we're, we want to help them do it because if we're not all winning together, it's just not worth doing business, is it? Right. Yeah. So what, what, where can people find you? Like, how can people start this conversation and, you know, where you can help them achieve those goals? So, you know, like one of the things that we've done in, in, over the last, oh, six to eight months is we created a podcast called Mosley, uh, Multifamily with Mosley. Um, and it talks about, we bring on guests and we talk about the things that are challenging to our market. Not necessarily about what we can do to solve it, but what is going on in the market? What does... What is an, a, a young aspiring as, asset manager, what should they know about the market? Our goal is to create a, an information on this podcast that will allow that person to go there and take away something that can help them reach their next goal. What inside information? And, and, you know, and I invite people all the time, come challenge me. If you think there's something we're talking about it that, that you disagree with, come on board. Let's talk about it. Teach me something. We're not arrogant enough to think that we know it all, but we know that, you know, what we do, we do really well, but let's, let's talk about it. Let's add that value. Um, you know, I had a young man call me about a year ago who, who saw me in an event speaking, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, you know, that he wanted to just talk to me about how do I get into this industry? So I gave him my cell phone. He was never going to be a customer of mine. He was never going to be anything. Um, other than a guy that potentially wanted to invest in multifamily, but for him to, to, to for us to talk and to, you know, so now he and I have built a great year long relationship. He's about to buy his very first building, you know, and he called me up about six months ago and said, Hey, I've got a great deal. Can you look at it? I looked at it and I said, don't do it. Don't do it. It's not worth your time. You're, you're going to lose money on this. So from that point on now, literally every other week for about six months, he was sending me a new deal to look at. Um, so that that that's why we do it. it it's it's relationship built, um, which is kind of fitting for our industry because everything in our, our industry is relationship based. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, I can definitely see that. So I'll make sure to share uh, with everyone where they can find the podcast in the description below. Um, what about you know how can people get a hold of you? You know, are you going to be any events coming up? Like yeah, best way for people to get a hold of you. So I, you know, at the end of this month, I'll be at the uh, VMA down in Virginia Beach, which is the Virginia Apartment Association. Um, you can reach us through our website at moseymultifamily.com. Um, you know, if you like it, leave, leave a comment. We'd love to hear some feedback on it. It'd be great. Um, they can email me at Todd at Mosey Multifamily to talk to me. Uh, I won't put my cell phone on there because I get a lot of, you know, crank calls on that one yet. Um, but, uh, yeah, those are the best way. Or you can find us on Instagram at Mosey Multifamily as well. Um, our marketing director does a great job on Instagram, putting a lot of fun stuff so you can get to know us as people, Perfect. not just our company. Perfect. Yeah, we'll make sure to share all of that in the, the description below and how people can get a hold of you on LinkedIn, Instagram, and maybe even that event as well. So hopefully you can get some meetings set up uh, once you guys get there. That'd be great. I appreciate it. You bet, Todd. Well, I appreciate your time too. And definitely enjoyed the conversation. I feel like I've learned a lot about you and, and what you guys are doing at Mosley and uh, where you guys are currently working, where you guys want to get into as well. So uh, hopefully this helps in kind of, uh, you know, you telling the market a little bit more about yourself. And uh, we appreciate you being here, part of the Business Ninjas podcast. I loved it. I had a great time. I appreciate your time. You bet, Todd. Well, thanks everyone for listening. And uh, that wraps up another episode of the Business Ninjas podcast. Everyone have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Cheers.